Welcome back boys and girls. And one of my viewers asked me why are you using this ugly black record pad on a beautiful rifle like Browning BAR. And he recommended me to get this beautiful recoil pad. And this is made of genuine leather and it's called Kick Killer Anti Recoil Pad. But let's open this up and see how it looks and how it really does. And while we are at it, let's talk about different kind of recoil pads and their cause and how they function and why I use it. Now first of all, this feels really nice. Very soft and looks like a very high quality leather as well. I'm surprised at the detail for the price. I paid $45 for it. Now compared to other recoil pads, the thickness of the pad is not as thick as other ones that I'm used to. And pushing at it, it's soft, but it's not quite soft as the limb savers or other recoil pads. But I think it'd be perfect for hunting because it's not too thick and it's not sticky to my jacket. All right, let's see how they fit. Let's slip it on and then do that. It does have a very nice look to it. It feels really good, first of all. It feels really good in my hand. Now, one thing that I'm a little hesitant is that having a leather on your rifle, this will keep to more sand. So you do not want to put any kind of chemical stuff on the leather. That sand's gonna stay with the leather. So, so when you want to clean your rifle, you definitely want to take off this leather Recoil pad. Now usually I don't use any recoil pads when I'm hunting, but the reason that I use it with my lever action rifle is that this stuff is a little bit short. So I need to lengthen my butt stock a little bit more. That's why I was using a limb saver recoil pad. But sometimes I feel like this is a little bit too big. But I think this recoil pad for this rifle is perfect. It shoulders really well. And again, you know, having the sticky recoil pad getting cut on my jacket sometimes restrains my movement. But having this smooth surface here, it feels really good. So, so far I like it. Let's talk about why I like to use the recoil pad when I'm practice shooting. The reason is I really don't like to grab the rifle really tight against my shoulder because that creates muscle vibration. So I like to touch the rifle as minimum as possible. So and stop resting on the rifle rest. I usually just hold it with my right hand. Now having a recoil pad, I don't really need to really snuggle it down tight. This actually does that for me. So I just need to pull my chin down a little bit and it will hold for me. And for me, that really works well, and I get very exceptional groups. Close that. But now, when I'm hunting, having this extra length sometimes restricts my movement, especially if the deer comes from my left or, or from my right. That extra length really does bother me a lot. And having this sticky uh, recoil pad grabs my jacket, so sometimes twisting it. It restricts my movement. So when I'm hunting, I usually take my record pad off. This also looks great in my Browning BAR. Also looks great in my Remington 7400. Okay, here's the different types of the record pad that I bought throughout the years. Now, this is stuff that I bought at the very beginning. This cost me, I think, like maybe 10 bucks or 15 bucks. And it does have some cushion, but not a lot. And it's honestly very cheap rubber and it looks it looks and feels cheap and then i stopped buying the limb saver i think this i paid like 30 bucks for it uh, they feel really good it's got a lot of uh, cushion to it so if you look at it, you can see the thickness difference it's about this is about 30 40 percent thicker and it's actually softer too now same with this the new one that i bought compared to the cheap one, it's about the same thickness and it's uh, thinner than the limb saver. But anyway, so for this, I think I paid like 30 bucks. And then I found this called decelerator. I like this a lot, it looks really good. It's got a plenty of uh, uh, recoil pad on it and it feels good. Now, I don't use this anymore, the reason is because at the top of the bus stop right here. Now this is made of very slippery material. So after coming back from a shooting range, when I have it leaning against the gun safe, the gun will just slide right off and hit the ground. And that really pissed me off. So after doing that twice, like an idiot, uh, I don't use this anymore. Right here is the slippery part. Rest of it is nice and sticky, but here it's very slippery. And that's what caused the rifle to slip and fall. I think I paid like 25 bucks for it. 
Okay, let's test out this 4B chord patch and see which was the best. To test that out, I'm gonna pick the gun that I have that has the worst recoil. Some people might think, is that a 7 mag? Nope, it's 12 gauge slug. I hate shooting 12 gauge slug without the recoil pad. And there's a story for it. About 10 years ago, I got picked at a lottery hunt in a wildlife refuge area. They only allow shotgun with the slugs. So I hit the range and I practiced shooting him probably about 10 rounds or so. And then I came home, I could feel something wasn't right here in my cheek. And about three days later, I had bruise coming from my cheek down to my chin. And my wife was so scared. She was like, don't shoot that thing anymore. And I don't blame her for it. Now the reason is because on the shotgun, you really have to tuck down against your buttstock to have that side line in because there's no iron side that's, that's sitting a little high. So you really have to tuck it down. And all that punishment to my cheek caused that bruise. And I had some bruise on my shoulder, which I didn't really mind. But now after I put a recoil pad on it, now I could tuck it down without really having my cheek touching the hot part. I could actually have this part instead of my cheek itself. So this is much more comfortable and it's less punishing into my cheek. I still don't enjoy shooting 12 gauge slug that much, but for you guys, I'm gonna have to go out to the range and shoot without the recoil pad and with a different recoil pad and see the difference in the felt recoils. Okay, I got the target out at 50 yards. And as you can see, the bench is six feet apart, so we don't have to wear the mask on the bench. I'm just gonna have it over my mouth. Okay, first I'm gonna shoot without the recoil pad. So I'm gonna take one of the cheekbones for you guys. Whew. That does hurt. I'm gonna go with the cheapest recoil pad. We still got the kick, but less punishing. Next, I'm gonna try the limb saver. And they they come it. forward, but there's a little forward tilt to them. So they come a little forward, they get around. What be for Christmas, an air that is exactly Much right better, no pain. Next, I'm gonna try the most expensive one that I have and most fancy one that I have. I got some pain here. It's almost similar to the cheapest one. Next, I'm gonna try the decelerator. better but they still have some kick i said the best one was the limb saver and then this accelerator and these two honestly they're about the same but it's much better than without any okay, with the recoil packs that i have i never actually compared them neck to neck and especially when i was shooting a rifle it didn't really matter which recoil pack that i used i was comfortable even shooting seven millimeter ramp to magnum but 12 gauge slug shot they made a difference I tell you man, shooting a 12 gauge slug without any recoil pad, I feel like I was getting punched on my cheekbone and my shoulder. Now as for the recoil pads, the cheapest one that I have and the most expensive one that I have, they perform pretty similarly. And next I have a decelerator and a limb saver. And the winner is a limb saver. Honestly, shooting it with a limb saver, it didn't feel like any kick at all. It felt like a like a good push to my shoulder, but I didn't have a contact with my cheekbone. So this was really good. Now with a decelerator, this really helped a lot, but I did feel some tug on my cheekbone and a little bit more push on my shoulder. Now let's talk about the recoil pads for the AR-15. Now AR-15 in 223 has a very mild recoil. You don't really need a recoil pad, but they come with this hot plastic, like nothing here. That's a military spec. Now I start with this recoil pad here. It doesn't have any cushion. It's a rubber. And I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. It's really easy to put them on, just slip it on. And then I change the upper to like this one here, 450 Bushmaster, it's a good amount of kicks. And I bought this limb saver recoil pad for the AR-15 with a 450 Bushmaster upper. Now this is very nice and soft, it's really nice. And I think I paid like 35 bucks for it, definitely helps. If you have AR-15 and if you don't like that hard plastic, you might want to think about these two pads. Now let's talk about the AI 10 platform. They have it in 6.5 Primo, 308, and even 338. And they have a healthy kick. 
And having this metal here is really no fun. It's a military spec. So I wanted to put a recoil pad on it. But the problem was this little ring here for the sling. So what I did was I went ahead and bought a limb saver and put an incision in the bottom. And that took care of the problem. Just like that. And lastly, like always, thank God for what you have in your life with what you got, but mostly stop abusing yourself. See ya.